Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be with you today on this episode of the Lord & Richards show. And today we're going to be talking about uh, all those things that contribute to your financial independence. And in this segment, as you know, we always take a study from the Bible and learn a little bit about what God has to say about money, giving, stewardship. And so today we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and we're going to continue a discussion we we started a couple of um, episodes ago regarding the giving, the faithful, amazing giving of the Christians in Macedonia during Paul's time. And as Paul writes this second letter to the Corinthians, he is really eager, he is really urgent in his desire to see them give generously towards the needs of a group of believers in Jerusalem that were suffering. And he uses the example of these poor believers in Macedonia who gave over and above their ability, who literally begged Paul to allow them to participate in what Paul called this grace. It is truly a grace to be able to give. And now in the letter, we come to the point in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 8, where Paul is going to challenge them from the example of Christ. So he's trying to spur the Corinthians on. They had already agreed to give, it's just that they had not yet gotten around to it. You ever have things that you postpone a little bit, or maybe your heart is moved, but you don't actually act? Well, that's what happened to the, uh, the Corinthians. They weren't putting their heart, their intentions into action. And so I hope that through today's episode, I'm going to challenge you in a way that will help you put your heart in action and know how you can help meet the needs among believers everywhere, not just in your own church or in your community, but all across the world. Because you see, the Corinthians and the Macedonians did not live close to each other, all right? It was, it was a distance away. And so broaden your mind as we read this section of Scripture to really think about people all over the world who are believers in Christ. Listen to what Paul says. He says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. A powerful challenge. Paul draws on the example of Christ himself, who, seated on a throne, came to earth, was born a man, lived a perfect life. He took the poverty of a human life. He took the poverty of self-sacrifice so that we might become rich spiritually. He gave us, of course, eternal life if we believe on him. So the greatest example that has ever walked the earth. And then he says a few verses later, he says, look, if, if your readiness is there, if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not what he does not have. And so Paul tells them, although the Macedonians really gave beyond their ability, they super abounded in their giving, what we're really talking about is what do you have there in your hand and what could you use to help others? And Paul then further clarifies, he says, I do not mean that others should be eased and you burden, right? So he's not saying, I want you to sacrifice so that others can have it easy financially. No, by no means. I want you to give towards the needs of those who are struggling financially. And he goes on, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, your abundance meeting their need. That seems pretty cool. God the Father has ordained that within the church, God's people would take care of one another so that their abundance may supply your need. He says, you know, one day you may be in the position of need. And if anything, if never in financial need, what you're seeing is that their spiritual abundance is really serving as a great example to you. It's ministering to you uh, through the abundance of the Macedonians, and then also one day perhaps the Jerusalem Christians will able to uh, be able to minister to you spiritually as well. And then he says this, so that there may be fairness. In another translation, he says equality. The idea being equanimity, not that you are, you are sacrificing so much that now you're the one in need and they're the ones with abundance, but so that there might be equality. And then he cites from the Old Testament, the story of the children of Israel gathering manna in the wilderness during their wanderings. And you might recall that God told them, you can gather on certain days of the week, but just gather what you need. And the idea was, don't have more than you need. It's going to spoil if you keep it overnight. 
So it helped keep everybody focused on needs, not on trying to turn it into an opportunity. So it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. So it was all taken care of. That's God's economy. So after Paul describes these wonderful Macedonian believers' passion, their love for giving sacrificially, Paul then encourages the Corinthians out of their abundance to give to those in the church who had need, whether they were part of their local assembly or anywhere in the world. And you know, you and I should be experts now at knowing where the needs are in the world. Frankly, pretty much anywhere except the United States is probably a church that has great needs. And any any of us here in the United States are generally churches that have abundance. So we ought to be looking for opportunities. Now, you might wonder, is this socialism? You know, I remember in Acts chapter 2, it says that they had everything common. Is this communism? Well, no, socialism and communism force people to take what they've worked hard and give it to others who perhaps may not have worked hard. It's equality at gunpoint. But this is a generosity that's supposed to be motivated by, first, the example of Christ, second, the example of the Macedonian Christians, and third, by the need, the tremendous need that these Jerusalem Christians had in light of the abundance that the Corinthians had. So as you and I think about where are the people of God suffering, struggling, you know, places overseas come to mind, the Middle East, where there's tremendous persecution, Asia, where there's tremendous poverty in Africa and South America and so forth, needs all over the world. For my part, my wife and I decided to start a foundation called the Foundation for Global Education, and we go specifically to those areas in Southeast Asia where people have not heard about Christ, where we can build churches, schools, and reach the unreached. However God leads you to do it, be sensitive to His Holy Spirit and focus this year perhaps on how you can meet the needs of others so that there can be fairness within the body of Christ, not at gunpoint like socialism, but out of the generosity and grace that God brings up in your heart. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk about giving, but I know in order to do that and to have the confidence to give, you personally have to be financially independent. And that's what we do at Lord & Richards. At Lord & Richards, our advisors meet with people just like you every single day who are worried that events out of your control are going to mess up your retirement. And we want to help you have that security. It really just starts with a simple phone call. 